uh, Karibuni Tena for part two of our interesting story. Uh, this is where you need to be keen and listen, and maybe at the end of it, you will learn something. So let's take uh, this journey together. So that was 2019. Mm -hmm. My next pregnancy was 2021. Okay. 2021. Mm -hmm. Now this pregnancy was not even planned for. Okay. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know. Mm. <laughs> I came to know that I'm pregnant mm -hmm. 11 weeks later. What? I to and down doing yeah. all things. Yeah. I'm not feeling anything. And then I just sat down and I said, ah, when one was my last period, more than now I can't make car. Oh my God. <laughs> and now yeah. I went um. to my phone, I checked the flow up. Yes. Right? Yes. I'm sure every girl has a flow up. Yes. So I checked my flow up. Hey, it's telling me it's due how many weeks late. I'm like, wait, yeah. what? Yeah. So I'm checking. I'm like, hi. And I remember that was on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Because on Saturday, the next day, mm -hmm. it was my friend's Nasirian's birthday. Okay. So we were all going to Elementator mm -hmm. for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, I. I don't have my weight. So I just went to a chemist. I can buy. Good test. And then I just went, I sat in the toilet and I laughed. God. <laughs> yeah. I laughed because I saw it's positive. I'm like, hey, hey yeah. Wongo. <laughs> but do you think? I know. I'm like, Allah. I didn't, I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't, yeah. you know, I wasn't aware. I wasn't. Yeah. So I just laughed. Mm. And this is because why I'm saying I laughed because... Mm. Because of the first that experience, yeah, the other the first, previous yeah. exper experience, yeah. I kept telling myself, "Me now go, me mistaki, yeah, pregnancy, you mm -hmm. know, because I was scared." Yeah. At this point now, remember, now I'm no longer on medication, either pressure None. or medication. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, anxiety, depression. I'm not on medication. You're good now. Yeah. Like, wow. Any, any, even any panic attack that I would get. Mm. I would go through it. I would let myself go through the attack. Nani yeah. Maliza, I calm myself. And I was just like, I'm not taking any medication. Yeah. So now when I'm saying I'm pregnant now, I'm like, oh my God, I've not even seen my doctor. Back. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, now at this point now, I'd already been introduced to another doctor. Okay. So apparently he's, he's dealt with people who've had issues with mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Okay a lot and he was really good mm -hmm. so now i went to this doctor immediately now mm -hmm. uh, so now no that was friday right so so that's it kind of i was in drinking so it's it kind of and then now monday so we came back on sunday yeah. now monday mimi ni mamaka kama nimeenda kwa daktari mm -hmm. so, ah. kuna so kuna vile mm -hmm. now i had to tell him about my previous history experience yes and he said, okay, so now you, you're already a high-risk patient. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is, because I'm in Pima, my pressure is good. Okay. What you're just going to do is we're going to start your medication. Pole, pole. That, to make sure that you don't get well. It's like a prevention, well. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I got in, but still, my friend, I was just puking like hell. Hi, my God. I would eat it out. Hey! Mm. The, let me tell you, I threw away perfumes. I threw away. Wow. I, I didn't want people to shower with anything that was perfumed. Yeah. Atom go, star soft. I was just like saying, you know what? Put it on the side. Because yeah. once I just sniff, yeah. it is hell mm. for mm. everyone. Mm. Now again, it mm -hmm. was not during COVID. Yeah. So now me, my doctor tells me, well, mm. it's COVID time. Now people were getting those, um, uh, what are they called? Vaccines. Vaccines. Mm. So at that point, me, I couldn't. Yeah. I can now you, you're not someone to be going anywhere. To Lia, Mumbai. To Lia. Please remember, all this, me, I'm, I'm doing business. Yes. So as I can do, um, stay at home. It was okay for me. Yeah. Biashara continues to run. Mm. So, 
I was just at home. I went through the pregnancy. At this point, that pregnancy, apart from the puking, mm. I really didn't have anything else oh, okay. disturbing me. Mm. Uh, but later on, like around 20 weeks, because now, remember about the previous one, mm. I got preeclampsia at, at around that time. Yeah. So I started getting now again. Anxiety. Yeah, anxiety is back. It started coming back again. Mm. Because now I'm like, oh my God, this is that time. So I'm just waiting now yeah. to be told, yeah. hey, now mm. you have clumsy again. Yes. Mm. So I would try walk. I really tried like eating healthy, mm. you know, just being calm, you know. Everything. But the anxiety took over okay. and it was so bad. Mm. Now this time, I, didn't even, I couldn't even sit in bed. Hmm? Now I had to be in the sitting room. Wow, okay. I had to be in the sitting room, and I would only put, you know, the series, it's called Friends. Yes, it is Friends. Friends. Yeah. I watched that thing from season one, ten to ten. Day in, day out. Wow, I'm going to Yes, day in, day out. Yeah. Like, I would just watch it while seated, propped up. Even. You don't want to even doze. Sasa, if you sing it, but because I'm watching it, mm. I'm calm. Ah, I get you, it. You know? Yeah. So I'm calm, I'm calm, mm -hmm. I'll just get to sleep. Mm. If I don't get to sleep, that's fine also. But lying down was was news to me. Mm. Your, your story, Nikasa, how like bed was something else. Mm. And um, I did carry that pregnancy. I carried it so well that doctor was good. He walked with me, vizuri yeah. sana, you know? Mm. And um, because I would go, for me every week, I would hospital. be in hospital. Yes. So I even had, I bought the machine, yeah. Yeah, mm. I would check myself. Um, my it pressure actually was good. always good. Yeah, yeah. But they, I never went mm. up or mm. down. Yeah. I was just nice. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Ali tells me that um, because of your previous experience and because of what we fear, yeah. just know that we are out of 40. So you will have your child at 38 weeks. Okay. Your baby at 38 weeks. Mm. Um, and because it's 38 weeks, I can be prepared that it will be CS. Yeah. Okay. So I said, okay. So Orange now also. Yeah. He knows about my anxiety. Yes, so I can prepare. So he's to. told me this from way before now. Mm. So because first I was I didn't want about <coughs> I didn't want to hear about CS. So like ah, can I be in? No. We are going to go about this. Mm. Trust me. Okay. So I said okay. I get it, I got it into my head, and mm. now I was starting to accept it. Yeah. It reached a point I was okay. Mm. You know I mm. was fine with it now. And. Um, we were going on with life, yeah. Missouri. Mm -hmm. We went, I shopped, because now I'd even done 30 plus. Yeah. So I remember now at 37 weeks, yeah. 37 weeks, I went, I was buying, actually in Nikwata, I Biashara Street. Mm. Because now I remember I'm having the baby next week. Next week. So I've gone to buy clothes, I've bought nini, nini, everything. Nishaenda, <laughs> Nishaenda, um, uh, what is it? Toy market. Ni menunua kila kitu. Things are set. Yes. So that day, I was supposed to go. I had an appointment that day. Yes. So I called the doctor. Nikamambi, I'm running late. Excuse me. Because I'd mm. gone to Biashara Street. I'm mm. I'm running late. Are you still there? I said, yes, I'm still here. You come. Mm. Just come. I said, okay. Because now, I wanted to hear if he's not there, I come the next day. Yeah. I can't be, no, 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 I'm still here. Come. So I went. Bio, bio, mimi, I've walked in. In fact, I was like pineapple. Uh. I'm just strolling in. Ah, hi, Dr. Hi. Ah, are you ready for, mm, next, for next week? Yes, yes, yes. After we talk about shopping, you know, we're just laughing. And then the daughter looks at me, told me, Irene, your eyes are very yellow. Why? Can do you mean yellow? Well, okay, I'm a tomboy. I don't even carry <laughs> <laughs> mirrors. <laughs> mirrors in my yeah. pocket or anything. Mm -hmm. So even my husband says, eh? Yellow, He says, by the way, mm. they're yellow, I didn't notice. 
So I used this mirror. I looked at myself. I like this eyes, you know the way mm. people with what is that? Jaundice. Yes. Mm. That ka yellow. Yes. I looked and said, Denya, the terror it's yellow. Can I be at a sifungi? Do this. Go to that lab over there. You know now that place has a lot of mm. uh, clinics, nini yeah. labs. Can I just go to that lab? Can you a test? Go do this test. I'm waiting for you. Mm. I'm not I'm not closing. So I went. Again, I still walked. I walked. Went there mm -hmm. because I've been told I have to go with the results. So yeah, I sat back. there waiting. Yeah, yeah. I waited for my results. I went back again now to my doctor. Yeah, very happy. Just I'm like, oh, yes. Mm. He just read it. He looked at me. Told me, Irene, you're a walking miracle. Mm. How are you walking right now? Is all I don't understand. And we're not even going to say anything else. Mm. I want to meet you in hospital right now. Usiende nyumbani, usiende maliyoyote. Hospital now. We are going to deliver this baby today. Yes. So I said, ah, what? What's happening? He does. He didn't tell me anything. Mm. I can't remember to. Please just go. To end the So he calls my husband. I come on here. We are even lucky to be having a wife walking around. Mm -hmm. The liver that she has at the moment, mm -hmm. it's the same as someone who died two days ago. What? Mm -hmm. Do you imagine that? No, I can't. <laughs> okay. So, um, so now what I was told, this is because now he wasn't telling me everything, mm -hmm. because he doesn't want to also to you stress me out. And all that, you know? yeah. So I mean, he kind of sipped early. We walked in, took a new COVID test, sasaniku, whatever. I was injected that sindano. Ile again your lungs. Oh, now preparing you. Now to prepare for delivery. Mm. So now the doctor comes and tells me I have something called HELP syndrome. Mm -hmm. So HELP is H-E-L-L-P, HELP syndrome. So HELP syndrome affects your liver, your kidney, and um, your blood platelets, they become very low. Oh, okay. Yeah. So even like blood will mm. not clot. What? Okay. Yeah, so I don't, I wasn't getting that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it affects, it's a silent killer. Mm. It affects women, pregnant women, from 30 weeks. Okay. 30 to 37, Apo. Mm. And the only treatment for it, it's the placenta to live okay. So you have to deliver baby. Oh. That is the treatment. Okay. Aina dawa ti let's take it. Yes. It's a silent killer again. Mm. Because it will eat you from the inside. And as you could see now me, I didn't have anything. You see? I wasn't oh, feeling sick. Sawa, okay. I'm okay. Yeah. This was a pregnancy that I was like for the first time. Mm. Even with all that pressure, uh, being on medication, mm -hmm. at no point did I get a place I was like, oh my God, my pressure is so high. No, you know, yeah. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So for me, in my head, I knew I'm okay. Mm -hmm. We are making it this time, right? So, now the only thing we have to do is deliver. And um, you'll be okay. No, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, number two, you'll be fine, don't worry. Yeah. So of course now I panic. I'm like, ha, and now what is happening mm. now, you know? Yeah. Because now I was told 30, my head, Next week. 38 weeks. Yeah. Now this is 37. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going, I wasn't ready for this. Yes. And, yeah. I'm not ready now. I'm just now starting now to just go mad mm -hmm. about everything. Mm -hmm. Now this is, it has to be done. Yeah. So I said, okay, let's do it. So I was taken to theater, that was November mm -hmm. 2021. Um, Nikanda Theater, like, sleep kabisa. Thank God they made me sleep completely because... Yeah, oh yeah I think mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So kabisa I slept. When I woke up, eventually, um, you know that confusion people usually have. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it started. Yeah. So I'm like, so doctor, 
you're going to take me to theater. He's like, we are done. What do you mean? Mm. We are done. Yes. I'm like, where is the baby? I can be a Wow. Very cute boy. Yes. Nini, nini. Yes. So now, ile sasa ni mamka. So I was taken to the nursery. I saw my baby boy. Nika breastfeed data. Ah. You know, now we are there. He was a cute boy. Yeah. So he was called Melita. Mm -hmm. Melita now is my uh, uncle. Yeah. And um. Yeah, according to his whatever he was called, yeah. was called his name, Kiprutich. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we were healthy, and my doctor says, you know, my biggest fear was you, me now. Oh, not not even because the baby. of now, blood clot. You know, oh, my blood was now during the so he was process. scared that I might bleed a oh, lot. Okay, okay, okay. You know, because I'm not clotting, yeah. so. That was now the problem now with that help syndrome. Mm. So he was like, I was more scared for you. But now already he had put me on medication, my liver, kidney, nimeanzishwa medication. Mm. So I was like, now, yeah, we are, we are, we are on the right well, yeah. road. Mm. So um, the baby was at the nursery on his own, like kwa kitanda, yani, peke yake, no yeah, just nothing. Just like other kids. Eh? Yeah. And he was given, he was 9 over 10, so he was good. Mm -hmm. And imagine at 37 weeks he was born, um, what was it, 2.7 kgs? I want to him big. That was a big and tall, yeah. you know? That was a big baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, so now there's a time I slept. I slept, that's Long deep hours, sleep now. Yeah. And when I slept, I just woke up like in the middle. This is now, I had the baby 24th of November. So this is like 25th now, like Gioni. I woke up with a sharp pain. Hapa. Mm. And I was disoriented for a moment. Mm. Like I didn't even know where I was. Yeah. I didn't know where, I, I didn't even remember I have a baby. Hiya. Like I'm just, first, like what is happening to mm. me? It was sharp pain here, mm. and nile kama you see like lodwa, what do you yeah. call it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bile. Bile. Mm. But I don't know how it. But it was painful. It was here, like hitting. Yeah. Like over here, I was just on fire. Yeah. Hey. Then now, sasa I couldn't breathe. Sasa ni kanza ile. I'm just like. <laughs> so the room that I was in. Mm. Uh, ilikuwa karibu na like corridor. Oh. So there was iyo kawindo ilikuwa juu. Mm. I just felt like I did not have space. Then also now remember me fanyua CS. So I can't just jump. Kuna yeah. uchungu. But actually I tried to hide because I'd forgotten. <laughs> I had but CS. Yeah, well. Ile, the pain I felt I was like, hi, okay, mm. what is happening? Mm. So the child nakuja, nini, I'm, I'm swollen. Tumbu ikanza kufuwa. My stomach is swollen. Uh -huh. I'm just like, I can't, I can't eat. Over here, it's on fire. Yeah. Then now, uh, eh, so, it's to be tested again. Mm. Kumba, at the same time, my son also is reacting. He's also reacting. Mm. His stomach is also swelling. Okay. But his swelling was so bad. It was big, big, big. Mm, same stomach, too. Yeah. Okay. Stomach. Mm. Now at this point, I'm not breastfeeding him. I actually became really sick. From that point on, mm. I became really sick. Yeah. Like I kind of I was being fed through a tube. Tube, yeah. And um, at this point, now I couldn't even see him. You know, and now him they were they had to give him like even your glucose. Ile sasa through. Intravenous. Yeah. Now they are feeding him. Kido, kido, the doctor comes, uh, the pediatrician now comes and tells me, now we've moved your son to the NICU, the um, ICU for kids now. So I'm like, why? So I insist, I want to go and see him. Mm -hmm. I go and see him and let me tell you, it was bad. So it was really bad. Mm -hmm. So I insisted I go to the ICU now. 
I was taken there. I was just being taken in a wheelchair. Mm. And the boy that I saw is not the boy that I held that day. Mm. He had even lost weight. And within a day. Mm. Tumbo, and his tumbo was like this. Like, you know, now and this is a, is a oh, small kid. baby. Yeah. So a big stomach, mm. you know, shrinks him also. Yes. Yeah. So you only like see the stomach. And now you could just see the veins, the veins and yeah. everything. Mm. Eh? Mm. And mm. Sasa, he's put, there was so much um, tubes. Tubes all over, and now he's in the like, um like incubate, the incubator, whatever. Mm. You know, it's to keep him warm because he has a hand So it's just pamper. But at this point, even he was not going, he was not, uh, he was not going for long calls. Mm. And then now the pediatrician just says, we don't know what's happening. What do you mean you don't know? Mm. Says, yeah, I just, I'm a fura too. So we are doing tests. Yeah. So they are just doing tests. Me on the other end also, they are doing tests on me because they don't know what's happening. Mm. So also I'm being told I don't have blood. So now yeah, you remember you guys had to yeah. come and donate blood. Yeah. And then I'm like, ah. Now in my head I'm thinking it's the help syndrome. Yes. But you see now my doctor told me immediately you're, you give birth. That's you it. give birth. Yeah. Your liver, first of all, heals itself. Mm -hmm. And then now I was on medication in your kidney. Yeah. So also, that one was going well because they would test me, like after maybe mm -hmm. they would test me and when I say my, it's going on well. Yeah. So we did tests. Then now they found that I had a bacterial infection. Okay. So this bacterial infection, mm -hmm. I got it from the theater of that hospital. And this is the same infection that my son got it. What? Yep. Okay. So imagine that big hospital did not sani sanitize, ser sterilize, sterilize them, the equipment what? and everything. So it's a pipe, it's a And it's the one bacteria that is found in hospitals. Ah. And you know, because this bacteria is around antibiotics it's oh, become uh, had headed with eh, it I down. like um the boy melita mm. was put on like three different antibiotics yeah. and they were not working when i'm working through he when i'm working through he there's no response at this time now they've even called big pediatricians or mekuja mm. It's still a mystery to all of them. Why yeah. is he not responding? Shortly yeah. again, they say, oh, we've noticed that mm. he has a leak in his intestines. So he needs in a surgery. Kwatumbo. Yeah, he needs surgery. Mm. You know, at this point, it's just those moments where you don't know what is happening. You don't know. And at that point, I think I, even, I forgot that I was not also feeling well now. Mm. I just, Ikaisha, now I was just like, what is wrong with this boy? What, what do we need to do? Yeah. You know? So, um, after some time, he was taken to surgery. So, it was the hardest. They had said it will only be three hours. Mm -hmm. They ended up staying almost six hours. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it was the hardest time. Not even a drip. <laughs> and maybe we're just waiting for those yeah. guys to, to come out and say, mm. what is happening? So eventually they came. They said, he's fine. Okay. We did the they surgery repaired. to make repair. So you can see him, but mm -hmm. he's heavy on medication. So at a fungui macho. Okay. So he's like asleep. So I went again to Niku to see him and he was just like asleep, just mm. you know, you're just breathing mm. but your eyes are, and you can see like he's struggling to open his eyes but, he's, but he can't 
but let me tell you children your children are just your children because i would talk to him and you could see him like you know responding yeah. and if i touched his hand like this mm. angenishika ah. he would hold your finger and that is that was our way now of communicating just mm. to let him know i'm here yeah. i'm here i'm whatever it is that you're going through i'm here yeah. with you you know so i would talk to him nini nini but also now because i wasn't feeling well i wouldn't stand for long nansike kizungu zungu so and my end also I was dealing with it my stomach is swollen yeah. i i also have to go through this now bacterial infection mm. and then my doctor realized that my cs wound was not healing okay because remember i was not clotting you're not clotting so what had happened is this blood that was accumulating over yeah, there yeah remember i used to say there's a lot of blood yeah there's know, a lot yeah. of blood so it was like a lump in my form ten so i was told unfortunately i have to go back, back again to theater, to yeah. theater. Mm. this is in a span of four days <sighs> yeah i have to go again theater same place cut me again clean it drain it mm. and sweat up so again akaniambia tu wewe nda kulalisha i said okay at this point now i didn't think i'm coming yeah. back you know mm. i just didn't think i'm coming i remember just calling my mom i said i when you ombe to sasa because i don't know i do not know how i am coming back from this again mm. i went i remember even my friend dish was there mm. my cousins kina mom yeah. there mm. so i went again theater um they cleaned me up came out i woke up i'm alive i'm like ha yeah. i am here yeah so let's pambana again you know so at this point now they are adding that i'm on blood mm. then now again they say my son he has he needs platelets and that first and like his father has to donate it is a, 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 it's It's complicated. It's mm. not kama like blood transfusion no, letu unakuja no, unaelewa. Like it's different. Cuz mm. even the person donating mm. has to stay there like for a lot yes. of hours. Yeah. And I you know. Mm. And uh, we still did it. Akaletewa, akapewa. So now at this point now they have established for him that the bacterial infection is not respond it's not responding to any kind of medication. Mm. Now at my and at Mimi sasa at my point sasa my kidneys have responded my liver is healed it's good um yo whatever I was feeling yo thing, it's yeah. gone yeah so now i could still i was just put on a diet like i was told not to eat food any high acid or, or anything mm. so now i was you are better you're getting there um, i was getting better mm. so now the wound in my back nika nikakuwa discharged Yeah actually yeah. so I was told where well, you're discharged the baby remains mm. here you'll have to come every day mm. to breastfeed yeah so now at this point i'm trying to pump, pump. now i'm trying to pump in akata in akata mazi in akata kutoka so i'm like what am i going to do so so you know na ni kona stress na daktari anakuja ananiambia you have to mm. you have to give me something it was so stressful mm. so at this point there's a doctor who came a pediatrician who came, pediatrician akuja kasema you have even to get if you you'll get milk from, from anywhere from friends i remember yeah so who do i call i call my friend <laughs> coin she was still breastfeeding mm. i tell her i need milk she was like i'm coming she came mhm unjoy ile massage style we just sit there you yeah. eat mm. as she pumps she's eating in fact i'm telling her even you eat my food mm eat i need milk so now we are we're in my room mm. so she pumps mazo inapelekwa naenda inafanywa sijui nini then now they wanaweka kwa tube mtoto yeah. to ku feed mm-hmm. and we did that for two days then we needed more now supply of milk more mm-hmm. than she could give so i remember i don't know um mom i don't know who she spoke to mm-hmm. our cousin mm-hmm. um then there was a lady who was like Uh, I have a lot of milk. Tulitumana hiyo maziwa iletwe very fast. 
aleta sijui vibuyunga nakwambia those two nani two bottles of water yeah. mm. a lot so it was put in my freezer at home yeah. so now inaletea watu yeah inaletea mm-hmm. watu mm-hmm. now this point now the, uh, when it came out to that day i was told you will be discharged go home you be coming to see the boy yeah. i went home i, re- I was released like 7 pm yeah. so i left nikifika home by midnight i was back in hospital because i went i got into bed i started bleeding from my wound wound i started bleeding this wound has refused to heal mm-hmm. because also now of that infection it's refusing to heal why hi i called my doctor my doctor had traveled mm-hmm. so i call him i tell him i'm bleeding he tells me what kind is it red fresh red 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 mm-hmm. i mean it's like dark dark you can't mm-hmm. be it's red i can't be so that fresh. is fresh yeah it's fresh blood so we went to hospitali mm-hmm. i'm going to call a colleague of mine and akuja kukuangalia so again back to hospital emergency nikaekwa mm-hmm. ha another doctor comes and says and fortunately you have to go back to theater i told him no 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 now no mm-hmm. i'm not going back mm-hmm. Tap time. Wow. What for? At we need to clean you. Nikaambia, nikaambia no. So then another doctor came. This doctor called a doctor Wasuna. Very nice doctor. Akakuja mm. kaniambia, sasa yao on wale on call, yeah. Gaina. Yeah. He came and looked at me and said, first of all let's pray. Because at this point now, I've read your file. Yeah. At this point, mm. I don't understand what is happening to you. Let's just pray. So we just prayed. And I is that kidogo mm. I felt calm. Mm. So I can be no you don't need to go to theater. What you're going to do I'm going to drain the blood myself. The kidogo. Yeah. So I can't massage in a bleed to in a toka in a toka in a toka. I can be I want to make sure that there's no pass. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Mm. So I can clean, I can drain until now he was satisfied. So now he's talking to my doctor. Now they're talking to each other. So doctor akamwambia eh let her be admitted. So that at least monitoring. Eh sitaki tena rudi hospital mm. hiyo. Now remember I'm just from hospital maternity. Yeah. I was at maternity. Yes. So now kumbe the rules are once you are discharged from maternity you cannot go back there. Okay. Once you've left Oh, you can't go back. But your there. kid is there. But my kid is there. Now that is again my other thing. So I said crying. I told them no 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 no. I want to go back to maternity. That is where remember my anxiety is sending me where I'm more comfortable. Yeah, now your space. My space the nurses that I already know. I that because there was this one nurse who really understood my panic attacks because even she moved me from that room. Remember when I told yeah, you the room small. didn't have a, the had a small yeah, window. window. She knew I can end I can book here corner corner room it had well, a long a window I big window yeah, remember yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the view outside there was this trees the grass. there was yeah. yeah she took me there mm, akafungwezo dirisha mm-hmm. and i felt better and she told mm-hmm. me when you feel you know your overwhelming feeling ya mm-hmm. panic attack kujanga unajua unasikianga joto tu alafu ni counter kukimbia but you don't know where you're going yeah So she just told me be opening the windows. So I would open the windows, I would stare outside and then I just do breathing. I'm like I calm down. Mm. So she had made it her business to even come. She takes me because I have to be cleaned, yeah. I have to be washed. And in Yosha because maybe I'd get dizzy when I'm alone, I can't yeah. be alone. So she would stand with me and in Yosha na kuja na ni change. So I was very now used to her. Mm. That was now my safe. Yes, yeah, spot, you know. Yeah. So I started crying. I told this doctor no. I have mm. to go back to maternity. I can't be how easy. Tena number 2, you have an open wound now. Uh, you can't go back there because of the other patients. The risk. You can infect them. Where? Kuna watu huko kuna CSPR. We are going to use the same washrooms so they can't take me. Let me tell you it was I started crying I said bim sinipeleke. You know I stayed there for 2 hours kwa corridor kwa kitana nimekataa kusongeshwa. Two hours I told them musiniguze what I want to I want to fight him because I'm mm. don't touch me where are you taking me so they said you have to be taken to the um, what is it called this 
yeah vidonda inaitwaje those those words are forgotten mm. surgical ward mm. so now it's to be taken to the surgical ward so there usually everyone else is going through something about yeah. being cleaned being bandaged and something so i said akaniambia this one is closer to the mm. niku oh, okay so you can come anytime so so akaniambia the thing that calmed me down was any time of the day you can just you are allowed in. to walk in or just call a nurse to wheel you into niku so i said okay so i'm back in hospital sasa now with a wound mm. sasa ni watu wanakuja kuni dress na maliza ninaanza kutembea na ngangana tu natembea i go to niku naona mtoto you know yeah and day in day out he wasn't doing okay he kept getting worse and you know now i've said you guys you told me it's bacterial infection mm-hmm. what do you mean he's not responding to it i had the same thing and you're healing i'm now. healing now yeah okay you said um his intestines were leaking mukampeleka mpaka theater still the stomach is still swollen mm-hmm. what is happening at this point now you can tell even this child is losing weight and mm. you know hana this baby is not strong it is just like no you know um the baby might because sasa yeah, yeah, mm. he's is uh, unlike you he might not respond the same yeah. way with medication yes. so we are going mm. through day in day out we are going through a process so i stayed there for some days again mm. now this time remember this baby was born 24th of November. Mm-hmm. Now in December we are past days, yeah? Yeah. So it's been there for a while. Mm. We've been there for a while. Yeah. The bills are going up. Pressure is going like what I also don't want to imagine I'm going to get better also yeah. and leave him leave again. Baby. Mm. You know? Mm. So what are we doing? You know. So at this point even now we are thinking of moving hospitals. We were like do we go to Kenyatta do we go anywhere do we where, where do we go you just need to move you know something has to be done yeah, yeah. and then now on the um, 12th of December so now I remember this my, uh, my daughter now saying ah mom today is a holiday i need to see my brother i've never seen my brother first of all where is it that when you go to hospital to get babies you usually stay a lot you know so also on the other end because remember now i'm not with her yeah she's also getting stressed, stressed out. out because yeah. i'm not there mm. i've overstayed in hospital yeah i mean she knew i'm coming with a baby mm. where are you you know so now we are doing video calls and i keep talking to her i reassure her we are fine we are fine so um at this point now Tana tells me okay today is a holiday mama I want to see my brother mm-hmm. so i don't know what happened mm-hmm. like i had said to myself i don't want her to see yeah. me in that position the brother in that position mm-hmm. but that day i said okay come Just come mm-hmm. so kakuja uh, mm-hmm. my husband akampeleka Mm-hmm. to Niku now. So even the nurses ag- agreed. Mm-hmm. They just agreed. They said okay. Yeah. So akavalishwa hizo manguo. Mm-hmm. Akaenda kaona the brother. So at this point he was just now in the cupboard. He's frail, you know, he's just and I didn't go. I didn't go with her. Mm-hmm. I I couldn't. And I just told them take a video for me of the two of them. them yeah. Like whatever. So she went there. She was you no know, touching touching the baby talking to the baby smiling you know so I come on and then she came now to see me so she told me you know i feel nice i've seen my brother he's so cute mm. he looks like me right so i said yeah he looks like you mm. so we talked at a you now she was telling me mama you come home i said i am coming home but at this point you know i was just breaking down yeah now i'm just breaking down i just told god mm. i need to go home yeah we need to go home you mm. know mm. Yeah. So that was on the 12th. Mm. 
So the 13th and the 14th, me I'm still undergoing my cleaning, dressing every yeah. day because now it's a wound that has to be cleaned and every day. And remember also now at that point I'm also on medication for anxiety. Yeah? Mm. So we go and um, on the 15th I woke up, I went, showered, doctor came to mm. Kamalzan and I'm okay, mm. you're getting better. No. At least now your wound mm. is no longer, you're not bleeding. Mm. So it's like it's dry, it's dry. So I remember that it's like it's like it's completely. Yeah. But I'm still on medication. Mm. So there was a drip and drip and injection. I was taking a lot. So I can remember we are getting better, mm. right? So I just showered. I went and I saw Melita. Um, to Kakaka, to Kidogo, na ya usual. Yeah. Then I went back now to my ward. Mm. So now I was supposed to go now after lunch again. Yeah. So usually that is what I would, I would do. Mm. I would go back, relax, and mm. then now after lunch, ni na ruri tena kwa siptali. Mm. And now when I went back, doctors came and told me that they realized that he's got an infection pneumonia mm -hmm. and that his lungs are really affected mm -hmm. I said uh -huh. also now they've discovered that his brain there was a leak in his brain so I said what how we've moved again from you know like there was a problem after another problem mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. another problem yeah and and they said his heart has what? It had increased in so size. In size. Mm. So at this point now I just asked the doctor, just tell me the truth. What are we supposed to do? What is our next you know move, yeah. What is our next move mm. now? Mm. Okasema, we're still doing tests. But uh, at least by today, mm. we will know a way forward. I said, okay. So at that point, I just broke down. I just cried. Mm -hmm. I just cried. I said, I don't know what this is. This is a baby yeah. that was healthy. healthy. Akalia. Yeah. Then in the so Akalia. In the breastfeed. Yes. You know? Mm. So what is happening? This is a baby. His stomach was fine. Everything was fine. I was fine. What is happening? In this middle okay, okay. part of mm. us, because after we were almost, yani tuluko ni le doctor na mesema you guys are so good. Nivle tu eno as yes. That that is why you are here. Otherwise, yani would have even I would be telling you go home. How have we moved again to someone is in ICU now? You know. Mm. And that was say around 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Mm. The new guys came to visit. Yeah. You and your and parents and yeah. everything. Yeah, and that is when the doctor came and said he rested. He had a cardiac arrest. You remember? That mm -hmm. was at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. He got a cardiac arrest. He rested. They tried to resuscitate him. Mm -hmm. It didn't. And that was now beginning of our trouble, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because remember, if I had a normal bath, if it was another hospital, that boy would be here. I was okay. What had taken me to hospital wasn't the problem anymore. Yeah. Someone did not sterilize that hospital, that theater. Yeah. And it cost me my son. Almost cost me my life. But most importantly, it took away my son. Yeah. And that's something I've never forgiven myself. That hospital, I have never, and I said to myself, I just can't go back there anymore. Mm. Even for anything. Yeah, I understand totally. I am. Remember, this is the same hospital where I lost my first son. Yeah. 
So at this point now, I was just feeling some type of way. I said no. Mm -hmm. And now the problem became even that that hospital refused to take responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. so, so they would. Because now it became a whole issue because now you remember even the bills that came yeah. now for this. The bills they had given before is not for this the end boy, bill. Like, just a day in hospital like was 50,000 for him to be in that bed yeah. a day and he was there for a month mm -hmm. it came to 50,000 yeah. Daktari I remember their bill for his pediatrician it came to 600,000 just the doctor mm -hmm. you've not gone to Niku you've not taken medication and remember he had surgery yeah I don't know, there's a time they did something to him, just that machine just coming and checking him out mm. was a bill. Yeah. And me also, mm. I'm getting my own bills. You've been going because also I'm in hospital. Yeah, true. So as soon as we got the news, I remember, I don't know if you were there, mm. when my doctor sent for, I'd be given some medication. Mm. to calm me down. Yeah, mom, mom. Yeah. You remember? So I remember even those some I slept. The time mm. I slept because mm. now this medication was I just slept. And then now my cousins, my friends they came over. Mm. They were told, "Ni sawa tu, ni kaini na kwa hospitali." By that point now I called my doctor I told him, "I cannot stay in this hospital. I don't care if I'm healed. I can't find a solution for me." Out of here. But I cannot be in this hospital mm. and my son is dead. So my doctor comes in, you know, he's an old man, he just, he really was, he really felt bad. I can be even I could see his anger, you know, because he's like, we worked so hard to get here. To get here, mm -hmm. that pregnancy, you did so well. We managed that pressure. That help syndrome that could have killed you didn't kill you. Yeah. You know. And then now we are going through all this because someone somewhere mm, was careless. Was careless in their job. Yeah. And this hospital cannot do anything. You know. Yeah. So anyway, the doctor says, where we are right now with your wound, all I need to do is dress you every day. Every day, yeah. And inject you. But I can do that either at home or you come to my office but apart from I could discharge so I was discharged the next okay. day I left now my son was left there and they refused to release his body because of the bills yeah my bills my own bills they were almost three million right mm -hmm. and I yeah. then and they were paid for mm -hmm. I paid for those yeah and then now there was that his own bills, which came to almost four million and something. Mm. And that is when now everyone now, our friends, our family, they were like, we're going to help, nini nini. So it was paid until Ikabaki like 2M, two M, two, two million. Yeah, 2.1. And they refused to to release his body. Mm. So I left. Mimi nikaenda nyumbani now. Now, um, now this is 15th, so I left on 16th of December. Mm. And they were like, uh, body, unajua kumbe in a, in a, usually now that hospital where they're supposed to take, they're supposed to take it to leave funeral. Yes. Now leave funeral is there, like, the me, sister or whatever. Yeah. So, taking it there now also means. Charges. Charges. So there was a nice nurse. The ones who were taking care of my boy, mm. they were just like, you know what? We're going to take care of your boy. To tamfanya everything that he's supposed to be done for until you're you're ready mm. so we tried now now the hospital yeah. now we tried to go now to the hospital to release this boy for yeah. burial they refuse and that is when now even like i think i had a problem now with mm. them even yeah. more because yeah. it is your negligence that led to that that led to that mm. and now you're even denying it where would I get a bacteria that is found in hospitals? Where would I get it from? Mm. They're telling Both me, at you. At probably you got it when walking. I said, walking where? 
walking where mm. you know ni me patana nayo wapi it is found in hospitals in especially theaters yeah. and um icu beds yeah mm. so where am i getting it from you know mm. so you know usually like you hear people mm. when they admitted kwa icu yeah. they end up getting an infection yeah it's those nani zizo za zinapatikana kwa two pipes zinajificha tu mahali yeah so that is how you always hear mm. people who stay in icu for long they end up getting again an infection and usually they will die from that infection Yeah so now going back to the hospital to try and you know see because we wanted to bury the baby immediately mm-hmm. and at this point now we're like uh what do you guys need so for you to release the body yeah. you know mm-hmm. so the g- one guy was like oh, so now at this point we're not even meeting doctors mm-hmm. now we are meeting the corporate part of the of the yeah. hospital yeah. so finance mm. cg what mm. and even the legal office was there because okay. now they want to make sure that they are not they are not to be blamed yeah. for anything mm. so we were um, at, at, at i think i even missed like half of the meeting because i couldn't i couldn't even handle it mm. the way now people you know people are just talking about this child like this is not someone i carried this is not someone i gave birth yeah. to you know mm. This is not a loss that I've gone through. For them it's just business. So at this point now my cousin mom even is on who's just there now mm. talking to them and you yeah. know alikuwa na mbio mbio. So she was like no. But this doctor the b- pediatrician yeah. admitted that indeed it was the negligence. It was an infection and this infection was found where in hospital. A hospital and it's the same infection I got. So how do you say you fine cross. if yeah. me I got sasa umtu basi alitolea wapi if he was born okay mm. unless now you also want to say then you didn't do the proper checkups yeah yeah, yeah. immediately the baby was Before born taking to the but he was he was handed because I was in theater so this baby was handed over to the father mm. right akamshika yeah. he took a photo even oh. so if you see the photo of just after birth yes and two days later hi mm. big difference mm. big difference yeah. this same baby that i went and held and breastfed why is it that sasa tena alikuwa amefura tumbo mm. you know so of course this hospital goes like this like this like this mm-hmm. oh kasema sasa mtoto tunampeleka leaf funeral and uh, until you clear huh? or hmm? you bring a title, title deed title i remember title and that title deed, yeah. deed mm. they were saying that within a month then we have to pay yeah or then now you're giving them rights mm. to do whatever they want yeah. to do i mean hesabu ya hii title deed yeah na hii pesa so i was like no mm. we won't do that so i said okay um and um what happened i think um so a friend of the father now to the child mm-hmm. a cascade story he said i'll help you guys we go through court let them release the bo- the body of the baby yeah. for burial mambo ingine it a photo kando you know mm-hmm. so that is how we went to court and at this point now My story has gone everywhere even to God put that story yeah, because yeah. now you know the story is it's gone at that point now I remember we were we had even a pay bill that yeah, people we were, were doing circulation money. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so this I mean I think just God sometimes just walks ahead of you in mm-hmm. every other situation yeah the magistrate who happens to be handling it says I've seen this case you mean this child has not been buried this is now after christmas yeah yeah In fact now the hospital told us we come back on the 3rd of January to see the CEO. So we're like so imagine Christmas what oh, wanakula wanasherekea yeah where your body your baby's body is, is still at the morgue. Mm. There was no Christmas yeah. there was no new year for me. Mm. I still have the wound that I'm still getting Uh, medication treatment, for yeah. treatment every day is, i have to go to the doctor for dressing and injection so yeah. at this point sasa alikuwa 
I was being injected instead mm. of the drip. Yeah. Uh, my mental health at that point is in total chaos. Mm. It was bad now. And there was nothing now to be mm. done. Yeah. What are you going to do? There's nothing. Mm. But for me, this is when now my hardest journey was also beginning. Yeah. Because now, again, I've left hospital without a child. This is a boy also, right? Mm, yeah. This is the second boy I've lost. At this point now, what are you, you know, even in, in your head now, you're thinking, yeah. what has happened? Mm. What happened? Mm. Then, um, so January comes, we go to court. So court um, rules in our favor. Yeah. Um, uh, the hospital was told release the baby without any condition. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, anyone who opposes <laughs> will face jail time. Mm. And that is how we were given the papers for the Kakua release. Yeah. And let me tell you again, as I'll always say again, going back to the funeral now, you know, I was waiting for the biggest. Yeah. yeah. Um, bill again yeah and i didn't even i don't know those, those people and i think the director was there he said ah baby all these days instead of what he would have charged us per day mm. he charged us half half of it yeah you know mm -hmm. you can just see like, like erica even like now the bill was just taken down and yeah. you know and the lady who was helping me out now, the baby was attending to the, Akanambia, your, your baby will be put here. Because I understand that they have a go down mm. somewhere, I think in Dasoleria. Oh, yeah, the okay, bodies, no. they don't all stay oh. at Lee Funeral. Okay. So they go there and then I think now they come maybe when, when you want ready to, to view pick, or yeah. when you're ready to collect. So it, she tells me the baby will be here every day. Mm. I used to go to the morgue every day to just see the boy just chill out. I used to be very scared of mugs. Yeah. I have never held a dead body until my son. Because you remember even mm. that day at hospital they came to say he's yeah. passed. Yeah. They actually I asked for him, they brought him, I, I held him, you know. So this was my first time. Mm. And because it's your child, it I I didn't feel like it's a Thing. I did, did actually felt you. like this is what I need to do because yeah. I felt like I don't want to leave you. Mm. I don't want to leave you here. Me, I'm mm. going home to sleep in a warm place. You're here. It's cold here, you know. So we stayed like that. And now we got to bury him February 4th. Yeah. That is when now we got to bury him. So you can imagine mm -hmm. from a boy who passed mm. on 15th of December. Yeah. That's like one and a half month later. That is when now we're getting to bury him. And that is when now all this drama with traditions got in. Mm. Mm. And this was another now burden on me. Yeah. And it was just a stressful thing to go through. Mm. It was just because I remember even now, first, now me, I'm, I'm from Kajado. Yeah. The father was from Kitale. Mm -hmm. So now there was already that. I have a CS wound, I cannot travel. Yeah. So, first of all, we were thinking, where do we bury? Then someone said, Simwende Langata Cemetery. I said, no. Langata Cemetery ni muache na watu wajui. It has to be at one of the homes. So, yeah. at one point, I had decided, we had decided that even Baba Mtoto, he was like, I'm fine, you burying uh, in Kajado. Yeah. That is fine with yeah. me. Yeah. Because that is near. You can you can get easy to legal, Kajado, yeah. it's mm. easy, whatever. Yeah. Plus I couldn't be away because of the injections. Mm. So I said, yeah, that would be better. Ah, enter mother-in-law. Mm. That is the day now you again start knowing. And yeah, you're not related to these people. <laughs> you are on your own. Uh. From coming from a family that I come from, a God-fearing family, we are basically Christians, just mm. Christians. Yeah. And the Maasai traditions, I always find that our traditions are not 
too uh, oppressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. There are some things that you can like circumcision those ones you can just go without them yeah. and nothing will happen to you mm-hmm. like you if your parents are from a good place like us guys we just there was mm-hmm. no circumcision so there was no yeah. but we still remained Maasai you know yeah, we didn't change, yeah. but there are some cultures now that there are some things that they just have to do mm. they cannot ignore yes and that is the day now i knew oh we have we are different yeah mm. Because now even like now already when I was in hospital now already there was rumor that there was that thing of konini wao tutawako wanakufa you know like Tisa wewe mimi sasa yes. si, si, na pia huu um, um, kijana si pia tutawako amekufa lakini wao yeah ulizi you're the woman here yeah. me I'm the woman now I'm being asked yes. konini wewe ndo tutawako wanakufa yeah. kwani kwa wewe uko na nini yeah, you, you still have a first born yes i still already have a first born yeah. him he doesn't have yeah you know mm. so I'm like ah what are these now mm. this is something now again I have to go through it again fresh to explain it to go through it to fight with people I don't have that strength yeah I have not buried my child leave me alone yeah so now we you know now there was that fighting here and there now when we said we're going to bury in Kajado we were told ah if you bury in Kajado all his children will be buried in Kajado mm mm-hmm. So first and foremost, you know when they told my mom, my mom was like, "Ah, when there are more children of these that are, are dying, yeah. that are going to die. Who you see ndo atakufa wa mwisho peke yake, there are more that will die." Mm. You know, first of all that one already a red flag. Yeah. Mm. Now to my mom, because now she said, eh, is it something that is and no mother says yeah, I mean, like that it's you know, uh, yeah. Then says, "Oh, the mm. other option is if you bury in Kajado then later on If we need to bury others we will come to Kajado to Kajado mm-hmm. remove the remains of that uh, Mel- of Melita mm-hmm. take them to Kitale so that the others can be buried so now the others can be buried now in Kitale okay but they will not be buried if this other one is still there either they bury him in Kajado or remove him take Kitale. the remains there mm. so we all said eh You you know my silent. Nani anaenda tena kufungua? We don't do death. We don't. I mean we, we don't, don't do take death, death well. Mm, so no. everyone just said, "Ha! Ah, what?" Mm. So at this point mm. now, it's reality is hitting me that this is not a family I want to stay. In. This is not a place I want to be in. But also meaning that if I buy my son somewhere else, that means missing goodbye completely. Yeah. To that Mm-hmm. And now that is when now my mental health took a toll now it was because now I was fighting with that now. Mm. And um now my mother in law you know started she started throwing hints here and there. You know but I remember since I was in hospital mm. she never came I was in hospital for mm-hmm. a month. Mm. She never came to see me. Mm. Until the day we said this, the boy has rested. I was released from hospital the next morning. She was here that evening in the house. So first of all I said that's weird. You mean you couldn't come to see me in hospital? You couldn't come to see this boy when he was alive. Now you're coming he's dead. What are you coming to do? You know. Mm-hmm. And I just remember feeling so uncomfortable and telling him, "Do not leave me alone with your mother." Because even like the calls You remember the call? Yeah. She called me one time in hospital. Mm. When I was still in hospital and the boy was still alive. Mm. She called me and said, "Kama mimi nikosea niombe msamaha ndio utoke hii hospitali na mtoto." And that really that was my first now red flag now. Mm. That is the day I said, "Wow." Mm. I'm in shit. I'm in deep trouble. So Um after that call now that I had with my uh, mother in law mm. that was now my re- first red flag I said hapa ni kubaya um and sometimes unajua unajitanga kama mkutano you you don't overlook everything yeah. no matter what you're going through don't overlook everything so at times just sit down and ask yourself what is happening what is going on because at this point 
if I've lost my son, their son has lost a son also. Two. She has lost grandchildren also. So, if at that point you cannot be there for us as a parent, but the things that now you're seeing, mm -hmm. eh? yeah. those are the things now at this you just know, Apa, Kama Kama Ishida Kubo Uzuni or Tebado, you still want to add more salt. Add, yes. Yeah then really this is not a good situation for you. It will never be good. Yeah. Yeah. Because at this point, in African culture, you know, when someone dies even, you always hear, oh, he was so nice, you yeah. know, he was friendly. Yeah. When it comes to death, people usually just, uh, they, bec death. Yeah, they become more understanding more. So uh, if you see that even in death, that person is not kind to you, that is the biggest thing God is showing. Mm. And uh, so at that point now, I, start, I started now looking at things. I started paying attention. Every word she would say to me even in a phone, in a phone call or face to face, mm. I just didn't take it at face value anymore. Mm. I would sit down and think about it, go deep with it, and try to understand the what exactly? And you know me, me, I, I don't fear anyone. So the first time when she said it, I called again. I said, what did you mean? No, 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 you know, I was just saying. I said, okay. Mm. I was just checking. So at that point, now I remember asking him, telling him, you know, your mom said one, two, three. I need you to handle it. So even him at that moment, first he was annoyed. And then now the second now time, he was now trying to defend the mom. The oh, you know, you know, my, my mom didn't mean this. So I said, okay, now we've left the hospital without the child. What does that mean? Mm. Now, when she said it, we were still in hospital, the child was there. Yeah. Now that we've left the hospital without her child, and I did not ask her to forgive me for anything because I didn't wrong her in it anyway mm. so what does that mean so me I remember just saying the prayers my mother does for me and my relatives it covers me mm. a lot because there are things there are places you would Kabisa for sure, like now even what the doctor was saying, you're walking around with a liver, you know, probably someone else would have been dead. Yeah. But I was like, there's a reason this is happening. Mm, still here. There's a reason why I'm still here. But even now, there's a reason why all these things are being said and being done, even before the burial, for me to open my eyes and see. Mm. You know, I never had pressure until my first baby with this person. And when I'm not pregnant, I was not having that yeah, okay. pressure, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm doing fine. Immediately I get pregnant again, there's something. And this is a baby even who's been born. And you know, like the second pregnancy now, funny thing is, I kept it secret. Yeah, actually true. I kept it a secret. I did not tell people I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. Yeah. I kept it very, very low, mm -hmm. even, my mother-in-law did not know. Until way later, almost seven months pregnant. That is when now she that knew. And because now she had come to Nairobi, mm. and she had said, I want to see everyone. Then now she saw me and she saw my belly. So she knew I'm pregnant, mm. you know? So at this point now, it was just words thrown here and there. So when I left the hospital, now, I remember now we've been told either you bury him, either we bury all these children yeah. now in Kajado, or we'll come take the remains so that his other children will be buried in yeah. Kitale at mm -hmm. one point. So my family said, no, go bury in Kitale. We don't want drama. We don't want years later even, mm -hmm. if you guys separate and he has kids with someone else and then he dies, so you will come to Kajado to bury mm -hmm. or take, you know, 
something so else. it was just a process now as i going through it and i was just being told i remember when talking to your mom she was just like it's time now you just accept some things that if you go bury him there probability that you'll never see his grave is very high um you just have to like no prepare yourself yeah. mentally so now because at least now the burial was in feb by that time now at least i could travel so now we went for the burial you know even i remember they were refusing to bury um because i said i'm anglican you're going to bury my son the anglican church is going to bury my son and the mother was like no 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 apana sasa sisi and i told i told them even the father of this man is anglican his side of the family is father side of the family is anglican so no why not because he's not alive and now the mom is going to this funny funny churches in kitale town now i suddenly have to go through that and you know me knowing again i will go back and say that even when i was in hospital i don't know people from their church the mother's church they would call my then husband and say um ati tumeona ule mtoto mwingine ako it's like his spirit is over this other child so they are calling him you know So then I would be told I'm in hospital you come tell me again I'm like what do you mean you people who's calling who You know can you leave you know just let it be leave it So of course I already didn't have good um things now with that church because I'm like why is this church not showing you that I'm going to leave this hospital is this church not showing you that our son is going to live alive it's just showing you death 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 you know I I don't like such uh, for me I don't believe that is religion because I don't think God every time is just having bad news with yeah. you bad bad news and it looked like more of more of, of e witchcraft yeah. you know this of you at umona this soul is calling this soul at they have sinned to do whose father sinned and I don't know it's that that is the curse And I was like uh, for sure it's not mine because me have a daughter <laughs> for <laughs> so I don't know what this other scene is that you guys are looking at so mm-hmm. it was a whole entire now drama with that church so I said I don't want that church to to be right. there for me I want Anglican church I know its ways so I'm comfortable with that so the mother in law said saying you know at a pastor me kosekana and that is when now your mom had to intervene So she called and said no. So she called the Anglican church there. Mm-hmm. They said we'll be there. Because she was saying that a burial for a baby should be done 7 a.m. So I said no, we're not going. Me, for me this is a child. You know they kept saying uli mtoto tu kwa hivyo ana kazi. Like hakuna kazi. Nikamwambia ni mtoto kwenyu kwangu ni mtu. Ni mtu akona na jina. I gave that person a name. They have clothes. They had a bed in my house. Was Everything nice. was waiting for them. Yeah. So with all due respect I'm going to bury them as a person. Yes. Mm. So those are the angles that now we went through. Mm. And then now we were thrown into the culture. So now here there were three cultures fighting. Now there was us the Maasai and then now there were those yeah. from the Kalenjin side mm-hmm. and then the mother is Luya. Mm. I don't know. So uh, sub tribe I don't know. Tiriki or something yeah okay. so now she was living leaning heavily on her culture uh-huh. because now their father is not alive so i understand also nandis the when the when it's time for burial mm. they also sleep with the the body sleep at home mm. now this is something us guys have never experienced yeah. but then now there was more of the other culture playing in mm. And it's something that I've just never seen because immediately we got home you know I remember the mother opening the casket like a tom toto you know I don't know talking to the baby and you know 
doing this to the people. Why you refused? You refused me. You don't want to come to me. That's why you're gone. You know, and all these things. Now me, they were breaking me down. I just couldn't handle them. I was like, no, this I can't. And so my friends were like, hi, hey, uh, this is too much. I don't think we are okay leaving you here. We will stay with you through the this entire night. When you sleep is when we will sleep. Asubui tuzikane, and then now we leave. So me, I'd said after the funeral, I just want to leave. I want to leave that home. I did not feel safe, you know. And so after now the f funeral, now it happened. Uh, the entire thing happened. At this point, now Anglican Church came. They we had a burial, a decent send off for my baby. And um, I don't know. You know, there was that whole confusion. I don't know because their grandfather, their father's grave is there. So I don't know because he, he's small. He has to be at the feet of his grave. His his grave has to be at the feet of his the grandfather's grave. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because who named Toto? Yes. So how is he? Toshana. Toshana grave. Kichwa, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, his, that's where his ends. Mm -hmm. The grandfather's ends. Right? And then there's a place they have to face. Okay. Now I didn't know. I don't ask if guys, guys have that. Mm -hmm. At the mm -hmm. direction of, I don't know. It's not with kids. Yeah, so now with them, apparently there's facing. There's a side that it should face. Mm -hmm. So now there was that whole commotion, you know, where to dig the grave, and everyone is giving different opinions. Mm. So I'm like, oh my God, can you just call one of your uncles and he confirms it so that you, they, get over it. you know, so that we get over this. Mm. So I, finally it was done. But I always feel like he was buried more of Luya style. Now with the mom, yeah. you know, and yes, so he was buried, and we stayed that night because we were told we can't leave that home just after the burial and go oh, yeah. and go to our home. Mm -hmm. It's bad luck, and even the next day now when we're leaving, we're told we have to go straight to our house. We can't go to anyone's house because it's bad luck to to leave a funeral, mm -hmm. go to other people's homes. So you have to go to your house directly. We just came here. Straight. Yeah. I don't know what, there was some nyama that you have to go with. I, I don't understand that you're supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't even eat it. Mm -hmm. So, and then now we were supposed to go back 40 days later. 40 days later is like, like, um, what is it now called? Like makumbusho, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just to go like for prayers and stuff like that. So they have like that f now 40 days. And uh, now within those days, that is now after the burial, between the burial and those 40 days that I sh we should be going back there. Mm -hmm. I had, had been told enough things. Um, I'd, I was told that now, you know, if, because you're not giving our son a child, if he stays out, you should not question him. Yeah. If he does not come home, don't question him. If he has a girlfriend, or if he gets another baby, don't question him. So I said, what is this? Have I not lost the babies too? How come my family is not asking him? Oh, you know, actually our daughter already had a daughter and uh, she was fine. So why is it that now these things are happening with you? You know, no one was doing that. Uh, my family was very understanding and very, very accommodative with them even. So it became back and forth, back and I think now at this point now I just sat down and said, I cannot, I just cannot, I cannot even forgive a lot of things that happened yeah. or that was said during that moment. Mm -hmm. I couldn't forgive it. I couldn't, um, it was just very selfish because even like the day we lost the, um, the son, that same day, by the evening, his sister was calling him at he kujo peleke mtoto wangu at he ana akona tonsils mpeleke hosi says sasa your brother has just lost a baby just lost a baby you are getting him from hospital to come help you take your baby take care of your baby you know it there was so much and it was just very toxic me i said ah, 
So I think we just tried, we tried our best. So we couldn't anymore. We just had to part ways. And at this point now, I, I needed to part ways because I needed my sanity. I needed my, just that, go try. Maybe, else. maybe somewhere else you'll be lucky. Mm -hmm. Upper, we've tried twice, I almost died. It's enough for me, I can't. What your family has said or done, it's enough for me also. I can no longer take it, I can no longer even pretend. Mm -hmm. You know, there's that mm -hmm. now pretending you don't pretend anymore yeah. because you're like, I think you would kill me. If you, had the chance, if you had the chance, you would kill me. Yeah. yeah. Or if you had the ch because I remember even my next of kin, mm. I always made sure there's a cousin of mine somewhere mm. around there, mm. somewhere around. Mm. Do not make decisions on my behalf. Yeah. Always consult with my family, because at this point now I didn't know. Do you want me out? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Ah, so a lot of things had happened. You remember now when I was in hospital. He had disappeared also. Mm. So I was going through it alone a lot. Yeah. But in, before other people, he was there. Yeah, true. Yeah, because by morning, if it's time to show up and people are hours. supposed to come, you will find him there. Sitting with me, probably doesn't even know what has happened, what the doctor has said. So if I update him, now he'll yeah, know, like, he looks like he knows. Eh? But once everyone dis goes, he also disappears and he wouldn't even go home mm. where my daughter was. Mm. So you would leave this child of mine without food, yeah. without anything. So my daughter will come back from school. She comes home. There is no food. Mm. She can't call me because she knows I'm in hospital. She doesn't want to stress me. So she refuses for anyone to call me until my nanny now would call my mom and say, Atuna Chakula. Then now they send money for food. But you see now me, I'm in hospital, I know, ah, I have a husband, he's taking care of everything at home. He doesn't take care of anything. He's left you in hospital, and he's also left a child in, at home. Mm -hmm. He's nowhere in between. See, you and end up. And he would come in the morning like nothing has happened, mm -hmm. and be like, ah, babe, that's what I'm saying, so me, I'll just... Tell him, yeah. Vizuri too, like, you know, those ones of, ah, yeah, okay, I'm going to say, maybe, maybe. Because even sometimes he'll tell me, leo nda chelo kukuja, leo nda peleka mtoishu le, wapi. The day me, I came now home to ask. My daughter was like, no, he was never here. What? He never took me to school, he never did anything. I have never seen him. Then that is when I would get shocked. I'm like, what do you mean? You mean you've been alone all this time? She says, yes, me and auntie, we're just here alone. You see, now that is when now you realize. And then when you remember your mother-in-law told you, if he sleeps home, don't question him. Oh, yes. Yeah, now it, it makes sense, you know? Yeah. So or I'm in hospital fighting for my life. Wherever you're going, uh, mm. that is now when I just said, I, this is it, I can't. Mm. I can't. The one thing I always know is, even in marriage, whenever things go bad, at least make sure that person you are with is kind to you. Yeah. Kindness above everything else. Mm -hmm. If that person is not kind, nothing will ever make sense. If at that moment when you need him to be there, they forget just for a moment of them mm -hmm. going over to visit a, a woman or anything, mm -hmm. and you are literally fighting for your life there in hospital, and his child is fighting for his life, that does not keep them Actually, focused and straight. True. Nothing else will ever do that. Mm. That's, you, that's your enemy. You cannot build a future with your enemy. True. So you better leave it at that, where it is, and say goodbye. Mm. Yeah. So that was that. So that was that. We buried. Now I just hold my memories with my son. Mm. And um, I just le left it to God for some. Some of these things are just true. Yeah, mm. and from that day, I have. Can you believe I was never Actually, again on medication? Health wise, how is your health now? The um, pressure part, mm. I never took any medication again. I went checked. I was being checked day in day out mm. after every like a month also. Yeah. My pressure is normal. 
I lost so much weight. A lot. A lot. You turned dark. Yeah, I was yeah. dark. Mm. I like my skin was. You just yeah. pull like this. It was wrinkly yeah, all thick. over because now I was just. Mm. And I just said to myself, Ah, I'll eat chips every day until I grow fat again. Mm. You know, at least now I, yeah. I I got my body back. Yeah. But I just wanted to get back to a place where. At least, even if I looked in the mirror, I would you. see myself, yes. the me that I'm used yeah. to, you know. Mm. And, you know, I really had people that were really there for me. Yeah. And any time I would get sad, I would just wake up. Mm. I just go to my friend's house. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm working. My friend, one of my friends, Nasirian, Nasirian yeah. Paris, they work from home. So they're like, you just come. Me, I'll continue working. You just sit there and look at them. Me, me, I'm on my phone. I sleep if I want to sleep. I'll wake up after that. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, now I'm fine. I'll go back home. But it was something that we had to go through. We had to go through with my daughter. Yeah. And how is she? How is Diana? How did she it? is fine. Mm -hmm. We really talked about it. I really made, tried to made, make her understand that these things happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is us who are to go through it, but they happen. Mm. And that whatever it is, I think the, what she needed more was my assurance that I'm there. And you're okay. And that I'm okay. Mm. She just needed, bec she became, you know, she became even those children now who don't go out to yeah, play. I remember. She would just want to stay with me and say, mm. are you okay? So most of the time I'd pretend I'm sleeping and tell her, now I want to nap, go outside. Yeah. Then she would like, are you sure? I said, yeah. Mm. So if she goes, I'll watch TV. I pretend, so at least she can go outside. Yeah. But as long as I was awake, she, she would say, mm -mm, I'll just stay with you, mom. Mm. I'll just stay with you. Yeah. She became also very clingy mm. now with me. She would make sure now she sleeps yeah. in my bed. I could see the chats with Nana. Yeah. A lot of gossiping about Yeah, you. yeah. So she just wanted that. Mm. But that assurance that I'm with you, day in, day out, really helped. Yeah. It really helped, mm. yeah. And you now, depression, uh, you've come out of it? I can say I have. Mm -hmm. I have my bad days. Yeah. But better days are more than the bad days. Yeah. 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 I have those moments when I think about it, something will trigger it. I have just those days when I could, you know, like that day I was decluttering. That one, yeah. Then that I one found clothes. Yeah. You saw the clothes. I found you. clothes that are still there that I'd bought him. Mm -hmm. And you know, it took me again to zero. So, but there's still things that I'm holding on to that I refuse to give up. Yeah. Uh, but the others I gave out. Yeah. Things that were still new beds, Nini, I sold them. But they're things that I kept. Mm -hmm. And there are those things like memories, so I'll be looking at photos, I'll see. Yeah. You know, I'll just be here. I'm, I'm, a thought will come. At times they don't last. In a kuja inaenda. Sometimes they last, but what I've always learned is mm. I let it, I let myself go through it. Yes. When it's that time, I will cry. Take it, yeah. I will be indoors, I'll lock myself in, I'll cry if I have to cry. Mm. If I want to be sad, I'll let myself be sad. Yeah. Because I know I have to go Just through it. Yeah. yeah, I have to go through it mm. and then I'll be okay. Yeah. So I never deny myself that. If it's something that you have to, go, just go through it. Yeah. yeah. You can never really, grieving doesn't end. It doesn't, true. Even for an, a grown-up, I mean, the people who've lost maybe their grandmothers, they were yeah. close to their yeah. parents, mm -hmm. it never really goes. True. But you just, whatever day it comes, go through it. Yeah. Then now, mm -hmm. once you're done, rise up again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on with life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, you've really, you've risen above. Um, it was a long process. It was a long one. It was. And you then and now, I keep telling you on, on chats, Ish, yeah. never remove that smile. I yeah. love the way that your friends have been there for you. Kina yeah. Dish. yeah. And you guys would go, no, I'm not talking about Magadi, you hang out, you, you know, there's, yeah. the um, Nyami is back. Yeah. You know, there's a lot that um, yeah. you had lost. Mm. But even you talking about it right now, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You've grown. You've mm. A lot. And yeah. So uh, there are women out there that are going through the same thing, or even worse, or even better, or whatever. Mm -hmm. What can you tell them? I would, um, like, like if it was pregnancy 
things. I'd say that um, let's get into a habit of getting checked. Especially if you know like your high blood pressure is something that is really on you. Because things, you know, we hear a lot about preeclampsia. Yeah. You don't hear about HELP syndrome. Mm. Go get checked. It's a silent killer. It's as actually worse than preeclampsia. Mm. But it's not common. They say usually out of a thousand, two to three oh. pregnant women will get it. Okay. So you see, it's not common. It's not, yeah. mm. But it's a silent killer. Because it just eats away your organs mm. the next thing you'll be doing is you'll be dropping dead yeah, yeah. and like at least preclamps it will show you yeah. with your body with what it will mm. something will trigger you yeah. go get checked mm. if you've lost a baby do not give up it didn't happen for me but it happens for other people mm. i've met enough people even in my journey in therapy I've met people who've lost, I know someone who's lost like uh, five pregnancies. And these five pregnancies, all of them were twins. Twins, 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 five pregnancies. Mm -hmm. And right now is a mother of twins. Wow. You know. Yeah. So, it's, do not give up. It's doable. Mm -hmm. Just get a doctor that you feel okay working with you in that journey. Yeah look for second opinions mm -hmm. you know yeah mm -hmm. but do not give up yeah yeah and uh marriage mm -hmm. there's some people who have gone through the same thing that you went through where you feel like maybe you tried a lot to fight for your marriage but because there are things that you also put as priority you're human beings and i would understand why your child would be your priority because it is everything you are working towards but right now, it is also your place where you need to be safe and someone is not there for you. There are women who are also going through the same. What would you tell them? I, I don't know. I think it would have been, it will be difficult to just give a blanket yeah. advice. But mostly I always tell people is, do you feel safe there? You know, at times, a lot of us, I mean, out here we only know about physical violence. Okay. And abuse is usually physical. Mm. But people are going through hell without being beaten. Especially emotional, yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's emotional abuse, mm. there's financial abuse, yes. you know? Yeah. And at times, even, like, for me, my case, I always felt that there was somewhere we were not meeting, even spiritually then. We were not meeting there. Because if I'm believing in God, mm. I cannot make plans with someone's family who believe that ni kurogo mm. Because then what are we doing? Mm. Because every bad thing that happens, well. you don't realize I was sick. You just say, Nimerogwa. Uya merogwa. That's not something we have grown up knowing or mm. hearing. So I don't know how to associate with that. Mm. But also it makes you question. So if I go to their home and I'm eating food, am I safe? You know, because then you don't know now which yeah. angle people are looking at sure. here. Yeah. Do, do they feel like because we need a child and we need a mekata kutoka, do we need to mukumutoa? You know, you know, you don't feel you really have safe. Second thoughts yeah. of so for me, I always say, mm. at the end of it all, right now, whoever you are, and you are watching this, you know what to do. Mm. You know what to do. You've been beaten. You know there's no way forward. Yeah. You know what to do. Mm. I don't know what you're waiting for. Yeah. There's that financial abuse. Financial abuse is a man sees you're doing well. He comes in. Makes, makes sure that they are going to break you financially. Mean to all. Either talk a kazi, stay at home, be a stay at home uh, wife. Or if this is the business, let me run it. Then close that business within a year. A business that you've been running over mm. years. years. 
he'll shut it down within a year. It's not doing well. You've been earning money, you incorporate your whichever job that you're doing. Unambiwa toka kuja ka nyumbani ule watoto. But now even that small money to go buy yourself pads, go buy yourself a dress, you are not given. That's financial abuse. Someone has crippled you to a point now. You cannot even make decisions oh, for yeah. small decisions for yourself. You can't. Your brother can't call you and say, Nina umwa, ni said na pesa, huna. You have to call your husband. Yeah. That's financial abuse. Mm. A lot of people mistake these things. Kunawala wanambiwa, toka ka nyumbani, but pia, hawanyimwe pesa. Yeah. Ata kama pesa si mingi, yeah. hawanyimwe. Yeah. Someone is willing to help you. Is it things at home? They're willing to help yeah. you. Is it things to do with yourself? Yeah. They're willing to help mm. you. But there's someone even when they have money, they still not give you. In fact, they'll make sure now you don't have at all. Yeah. Atam Kizema, as friends, you need to have lunch. Well, you can't. Yeah. Yet you're not poor. Mm. So a lot of abuse, it is there. Mm. Emotional. Someone comes and insults you day in, day out. Hakuchapi. Yeah. But they insult you, they crush your self-esteem. Mm. Yeah. So you know these things. Yeah. You know where you're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. You're just not doing it because yes. maybe you're saying society. Mm -hmm. Mimi was not scared about the society. I come from a um, Christian family, but I said, you know what? It's up to me, between me and God. Yeah, yeah, true. There's one thing my brother told me one day. <laughs> my brother went out, haka kunywa tu pombe, haka nipigia, haka niambia, uwe hata kusumbua mungu sasa. He saved you twice from hospital. Yeah. Sasa hata kumpatia stress. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has told you something, you're just not listening. Yeah. Leave. Stop it there. I don't know what is happening, yeah. but this looks deeper yeah. than what we think. Yes. It's deeper. Mm -hmm. But I prefer my sister alive. Get out of there. Come on, Mtoto, you don't have to have Mtoto please. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And you know, I sat down and said, huh? I have seen things that I've never. Let me tell you even. My, my morning sickness was not normal. Mm. This morning sickness, mm. it was, I used to even vomit blood. It was just... Unatembea tuivi, unahewa inaisha, like in your body, like I, it was just something. That thing of like, I cannot sleep. Yeah. Suddenly I have to sit. I was pregnant before, I was okay. This was something else. It was like my body literally was fighting rejecting, me day in, day yeah. out. It was rejecting it. Mm. You remember that was, I was dark. Darkened. I became dark, like, yeah. I, I told you, this is the same person. Yeah, your photos were... I hated everything, I hated everything, I didn't mm -hmm. want my phone. I could keep it somewhere at Asifiki Yosimu for three days. It would just irritate me. Yeah. And so those are the things sometimes. Mm. If you're in that situation, you know there's, there are people where you come from a place, your in-laws are nice people. Your in-laws are, you know, mm. compassionate with you. They're kind with you. That is fine. Continue trying. Continue seeing where God blesses you. Yeah. And even when there are the options, there is adoption. There is surrogacy. There are very many options. True. But if you sit down and realize that this person is not kind, that family is not kind, usi mm. Yeah. Let it go. Just let it go. Mm. Yeah. Mimi counted my losses. I said, sour. No, not losses. We, we normally say lessons. Yeah. You got what you got from it. You've learned from it. Today someone will learn from whatever you've yeah. said. And you're, you're, you're amazing. Just so Thank that, you. That's all I can say. So uh, now for Nyami, way forward. This is now your... Way forward? Mm -hmm. I think I am still Mama Tayana. Yes. So I still continue to to be a mom. Yeah to my daughter who's now 13 years. Mm -hmm. So I more of my business, the interior design and Takangana to Yes. You know, that is it gives me joy, it gives me yeah. a day to look forward to true, everything else. True, true. And wanting to make it grow. Yeah. You know? Yes. Um my friends and family always, you know, they still yeah. remain. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm still struggling with some things, yeah. like church. Mm. 
Yeah. Eh, still I'm struggling with, with it, yeah. but a day at a time. Mm. A day at a time with yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, I have found love. Mm. I just want to. A day at a time. Take it a day at a time. Yeah. You're glowing. I <laughs> tried <laughs> 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 You're glowing. Just say. Never it. Glow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a little bit. Uh, I'm having PTSD, I think, with all this <laughs> yeah. baby stuff. Mm. Yeah. So it's not right now. It's not a thing that I'm out there looking for. Yeah. No. Of course, someone who's dating you right now understands that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one thing I always mm. say. You have to come first. If you meet me and you just understand that yeah. I am not looking. Mm. I'm not looking. I'm not actively looking for mm. kids. Yeah. I am fine where I am. I'm almost turning 41. So mm. also, I just want to live life now. Yeah. Yeah your time yeah okay so for someone who wants to do uh interior mm -hmm. where can they find you um my page at ig is called melita homes mm -hmm. or my personal handle which is nyami namnyak taki so it's nyami taki yeah we'll just write it down here so that anyone can reach out yeah nyami taki yeah and my number you'll you'll just write it, it as well okay zero seven zero five nine seven three five zero nine Yes. Yes. And it's for business. Remember, for it's business. For business. Yeah. She's already taken. The <laughs> joke Okay. <you're> <laughs> Bandai. Wow. So, uh, thank you so much for allowing us this wonderful time. Yeah. And for sharing this story. Personally, I didn't know what you you went through like that. Yeah. You never really shared, which I understand, and that's why I told you, when you heal, you will call me. Yeah. So, you know, that tells yeah. me your healing and your yeah. world. I'm yeah. so, so proud of you. And I <laughs> really wish you nothing but the best, Mama Angu. Thank you. Keep being the person that you are. Um, I really, truly also appreciate your friends. Mm. And also the family, the Mpoke family. Kudos, yeah. guys. Yeah. It is hard, you know, sometimes saying positive things about family and friends when you're still here mm. and it's because of what you've gone through. It's not easy. Yeah. But you appreciate because they have stood there for you. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for this wonderful time. And my people, it is never, never a good thing to give up. Her story, I'm sure today, someone is learning somewhere and it will change someone's uh, life again. So, uh, there's nothing much to add. I think I just want everyone to celebrate this woman. Let's be happy for her. Let's keep praying for her. As she said, it, it takes some time, but she'll eventually get there. So if your friends are going through something as hard as this, it is also good to understand them. Sometimes when people shut down, it is not because they want to. They can't. Yeah. It is good to understand. Kuna your time in Africa and you can't. So until next time, take care. And if you have not subscribed to my channel kindly, do not forget to subscribe and also to hit the notification bell so you can be notified each time we do an upload. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.